You ready? It's hot. So hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Patera with you today. We're gonna to be making homemade cornbread, but not just any homemade cornbread. Honey, we took our own corn that we have grown here on the farm that I dried and I have shucked and I have kept. Look at that, it could be for seed saving or for cornbread, cornmeal, ooh, ooh, ooh. And we're gonna make our homemade cornbread recipe for you right here today. All right, so I have several hand grinders for grain. It could be to make flour, it could be for cornmeal, etc., etc., etc. So I have a newer one that I had never tried before. I've actually had it about a year, but it's been in the box and we wanted to try it out. I did post some pictures of it the other day online and y'all went hog wild for it. So we're finally testing it out, so here's the deal. The other night we tested it as far as just grinding. James had a much easier time than I do with it, simply because we don't have the best setup yet for it. Let me show you what I'm talking about, okay? So you can see here that we just have it simply attached to the end of our little island, just our little stainless steel island here in the kitchen. So it's not the, the most durable, steady, it shakes type deal. But for, you know, me, it's it works pretty good. James can work it with, a, you know, for with no problem whatsoever. And he did the other night with our first batch. Well, I just did a second batch today. This is the second batch, okay? This is not going to be, this is not um, the first batch that I'm going to be working with. So I just did this today. So I want to show you what I did. I'll put in some clips of me grinding it. And it's a little bit tough the first time around. Of course, I just had surgery a week and a half ago. So I'm a little restricted. And believe me, I can feel it. Um, so Gabriel helped me out a little bit because I didn't want to um, have struggle too much on the first time going through. Then I took it through a second time, okay? So what you're looking at is my corn that has been ground down twice right in here. You can see all the remnants. And here is what I grew last year. I know you're going to ask. Hickory King. There is also a Hickory Cane. These are heirloom uh, corn. It's great for uh, to eat. It's actually pretty sweet in my opinion, but it's supposed to make wonderful cornmeal for cornbread. So we're going to find out, honey. So over here is the first batch. I kept it just so you could see it from if you saw the pictures the other day. This is what James did. Now he broke it in the first time. So you're actually looking at this being ground three times. He makes it look like a walk in the park, of course. I have a little more difficult time with it because I have to really struggle with it only because we need a better setup for it. So we realize that if you have questions about that, uh, we can try to help you out, but we're just basically testing it before we figure out exactly how we want to permanently place it on something or with something more stable. Wouldn't hurt to be able to do this outside also because it can get a little messy. I mean, sweeping and wiping things down and vacuuming a little bit, it's not a big deal. But if you wanna avoid that, you probably would like to have something that you can easily take outside on the patio or wherever. Go for it, be done, and then come in and cook your cornbread. So let's go over the cornbread basics, How what I'm gonna be doing today. Your recipes may be different, I get that. All is good, but this is how I work with real deal cornmeal. So first things first, I like to use a nine inch, boy, I have worn this puppy out. Let me tell you right now, not a 10 inch. You can, you can use whatever you like, okay? I like to use a nine inch cast iron skillet. The reason I prefer that is because it helps make the rise 
Uh, it makes it a little more condensed and a higher cornbread. You don't have to do that, okay? I get it, whatever works best for you. I need to get a new one, another additional one. All right, so that's what I'm gonna be doing first. I set my oven at 425 degrees. You may bake yours at four. You may bake yours at 450. Like I said, everybody and everybody's mamaw did something different, but this is the basic rundown of what I do. So I'm gonna take my cup of cornmeal, one full cup, this is what I ground today. I only ground, I had to do it twice. It looks pretty good, so we're gonna go with it. So this is the first ingredient, let's go with the rest. So the next item I'm gonna be using, you can see right here, all from Aldi, basic all-purpose flour, one full cup, going right in here, <laughs> going right in with the cornmeal. Now, what it boils down to is you're obviously not working with a mix, so I'm getting all my stuff here. So this is true to true blue cornbread, and it is cut with flour. That's to help soften it, make it uh, a little bit more delightful, and we're gonna add other things to help it out. This is not a mix. This is not like three rivers. A lot of people get things confused about that. Your mixes already have all this stuff in it. So we're basically creating our own mix, okay? Okay, so there are four dry ingredients. There are eight ingredients total. The first four are your dry ingredients. That's how I remember this. So obviously, we have our cornmeal and our flour in here. Haven't mixed them yet. The next thing that I'm gonna be adding whoop, whoop, is I'm gonna be putting in some salt, okay? Because And you just kind of go with it how you want to. Maybe a take probably a teaspoon or so because you're gonna have to add flavor to this. This is, you know, this is pretty plain Jane, okay? Just like if you have corn on the cob, you might wanna add a little butter to it, might wanna add a little salt, you know, whatever. So we're gonna add some salt, that's gonna be a dry ingredient, and then I'm also gonna add a tablespoon of baking powder, not, not baking soda, no, 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 you're not making buttermilk biscuits, you're making cornbread. So you wanna add a little rise on that, honey. So this is what we're gonna do. These are all of our dry ingredients, the four main dry ingredients. Okay, so I've mixed my dry ingredients. You wanna get those blended through because you don't want baking powder on one side and salt on the other. That'd just be funky town. Now we're gonna move into the wet ingredients. So let me tell you what they are. You're gonna add one cup of milk. You can choose buttermilk if you have it or prefer it. I'm gonna be adding two eggs. You can do one egg if you prefer, but I'm gonna do two. I'm gonna add two. Then I'm also gonna add about a half a stick of butter. I don't really measure. I just kind of go with it, <laughs> whatever. And then I'm gonna commit the ultimate cornbread sin. That's right. That's right. You gonna call me a little Miss Johnny Cake? You might. Now, when I make cornbread like this. I ain't kidding y'all. Even if it's a little fake honey, I add in honey. Just a little bit, not a lot. I, it doesn't really sweeten it. I just want to cut any bitter taste that I could have gotten from these grains, okay? So don't, don't, I'm not, cre don't, don't call my Nana. Don't get upset with me. You don't have to do this, okay? I just like it. It just seems to soften the, the taste a little bit. I don't do it with my mixes so much, but when we get down to business like this, I like a little bit of honey in it. I like sweet things. So here's what she looks like mixed up. Simple, if it's too thick for you, you can simply cut it with a little bit of water. That's up to you, it's your world, do what you need to do. My nine inch cast iron skillet is in the oven heating up with butter in it. I'm gonna give you another cheat. You do what works best for you. If you're not confident that it's gonna flip out, maybe your pan is not seasoned the way you want it to, all kinds of situations here. Since we're using this cornmeal for the first time today, I'm gonna cheat and I'm not apologizing. I'm gonna put a little bit of parchment paper down in the cast iron. Now, if you're making breads and different things like that in Dutch ovens, parchment paper is totally the way to go. You can also use it with your cornbread. So don't, don't worry about that. You do what works best for you and what you need to do to get done in the kitchen, y'all, okay? So don't fret about what great your great-great-granny might have done or what somebody told you you need to do. You do what you need to do. Just like if you wanna put honey, a little bit of honey in that cornbread, 
You're the one eating it, not somebody else did not somebody else down the road, I don't think. Okay, people, pretty little cornbread. How you doing, honey? <laughs> Look, I did this myself. I did this myself, y'all. You can do this yourself. Grow the corn, y'all. All right, now here's the deal. We're gonna have to cut it. I'm gonna cut it on this side because I know somebody's gonna say, you didn't cut it. We wanna see the ends of it. We wanna see if you cooked it right. Let's see what's going on here. No, I'm not sharing though. Okay. Here you go. Let's see. You ready? It's hot. Oh my God. People. People. <laughs> Look. Mm -mm. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Check it out. I have no words other than this is delicious. This is fantastic. I'm dropping on the floor. I don't care. Yes, this did a great job grinding up the corn like that. Like I said, it only took two times for this. So this is my cornbread recipe. This is how I do it. You can use any cornmeal that you have, if you get it from like, say the Mennonites or different people that already like stone ground, stone grind your stuff up, you can do it that way too. You don't have to necessarily grow it, but this is the recipe to make it if you have real deal cornmeal. Guys, like, subscribe, and share. I'll put the link down below for the actual grinder. If you need one, I would invest in one. At least you'll have it. And that's another important prep. I'm so excited. We got a break, I gotta eat. Oh my gosh. Like, subscribe, and share, guys. More recipes and all kinds of videos coming your way. We'll see you on the next video. I'm not kidding. I wish my Nana was here. Uh, seriously, my Nana would be flipping out right now. Nana, this is for you.